Welcome to a new guy on this channel, and on this occasion is the Focusrite console from Brainworks. Now, this is not a review, it's a deep dive guide about this plugin. Now, everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like this guide, please like and subscribe, and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can check the links at the description. Alright, so let's just begin with the uh, filter section. As soon as you turn it on, right, if I turn it off, it's doing nothing. But as soon as you turn it on, it's doing a little bit of roll off right here on the very low, low frequencies and a little bit on the high frequencies. So if the filters are on, that is that you get this by default because they are on. So you can turn it on and turn them back off from here. Alright, so let's just do some uh, drumming and have some sound. So this is an instance of Superior Drummer. I'm going to be using this. And a couple more things. So let's start filtering. So we, uh, with the uh, low pass, we can go from 20k all the way to down to 3.9k. So it's a deep cut. Now, with the high pass filter and low pass filter, you have this. This is going to be extending the range of whatever you can do right here. So when this is on, instead of starting from the 20k, you can start from the 6.7k. And then you go down. You can go all the way down to 1.3k. So if you want to, you know, go deeper, you just enable the divide and you're gonna get it. All right, so I'm gonna be uh, maybe turning this off. So same thing with the with the high pass filter. I'm gonna be going up. And we're just gonna chop the low frequencies from 20 hertz all the way up to 330. All right. The times to 3 is going to change how this works from 60 Hz because we are multiplying by 3. So instead of 20, it's going to start from 60. And we can go way up. All right. So this is the filter section. Pretty simple and it's straightforward. All right. So let's talk about the EQ that we have right here. So we have a high filter. We have a low filter. You know, this uh, bands to for the high and lows. And then we have a high mid frequency and a low mid frequency. Now, these ones are a little bit more complex. We have a lot more options, and these ones are just a little bit simpler. So, in terms of the bands, you can just turn them off from here. So, if I do something like this, I can just turn that band off, and I can just turn this one off. Same with this one. If I go up and if I go up, maybe go down, I can just turn each different band off. Now, if you have them all in, you know, all on, you can just turn them all at once with the all EQ. It's just gonna kaboom, uh, turn them all off. So the high one and the low ones are only shelving EQs. So you have no bell EQ. You cannot change them to a bell EQ. You cannot do that. It's just a shelving EQ. So if we have to compare it with an SSL, for example, and I'm going to be always comparing with a maybe a different console that you might know. And uh, the perfect example is the SSL. Uh, we cannot convert this into something else. So if I start boosting, we are going to be starting and I'm going to remove, you know, right now the filters. So we can start boosting that section. Now, now, the thing is that right here at the bottom, you can select where you want to boost and when you when you where you want to uh, attenuate. So if I go up, uh, we are going to be starting from the 3.3K and we can go all the way up to the 18K. As you go up, notice that there is a tiny little curve right here, which is, you know, nice. And if we go down, you know, we get the same result. So pretty simple, you know, just pretty simple cue. Then we have the same thing on the other side. So if I boost, we're going to be boosting all the low end and right here, all the way from the uh, 33 hertz, all the way up to 330. Now, remember the uh, filters that we have right here will interact with the high frequency and the low band, you know, frequency. So if I start, you know, chopping some of the lows, it will affect whatever we are doing right here. So, you know, we can use a, you know, we can use them both to have a nice combination, a nice blend of both. That's the plan. Now, same thing with high. If I maybe put it right there and I just start chopping right here, it's going to affect whatever we are doing right here. All right, so let's do some drumming. Now we need to talk about this band and it's going to be a little bit more fun with, you know, with something going on in the background. So if I boost, you can hear that boost. I go up, keep going up, maybe way too much, right? Let's do a little bit of boost. 3K, 33 uh, hertz. Keep going up, it's going to get wider. All right. Now all this again, it's just pretty simple. Let's go to the next ones, the high mid frequency and the low mid frequency. Now on this ones, is, uh, this ones are a bell EQ. So you can go up, 
It's just gonna boost or you can just attenuate. Now, the cool thing with this ones is that you can uh, decide how wide your band is. So if I go to the left, it's gonna be wider. And if I go to the right, it's just gonna be a lot more narrow. So you just can focus whatever it is that you want to boost. And then, you know, you can find the sweet spot right here and is where you select the frequency. If I go all the way down, it's gonna start from the 600 Hertz all the way up to the six. And remember, this is the high mid frequency. Right. If we want to make it uh, you know, wider, we just can. We can make it wider and just boost a tiny little bit. Now, since this, uh, this one is the high mid, everything interacts with everything. So maybe I can boost a little bit right here. And maybe if I want to do a tiny dip right there, we can. And since this can go really thin, you know, we can do, we can carve some nice curves. And if I turn them off, Now, right here, just like the, uh, you know, the filters, we get the times three. So if we go from 600 all the way up to 6K, by doing the times three, we're gonna be going from 1.8K all the way up to the 18K. All right? And again, right here, we have the same principle. You can go all the way down, boost maybe a little bit of that, or maybe stand on the 3K and get a little bit more presence if you wanted to. pretty simple right it's a very easy to use eq now let's talk about the low and low mid uh, frequency and it's just pretty much the same idea but you know on different frequencies so if we go up we get a bell, a bell eq and we can attenuate right so then we have uh you know we can just make it a lot more narrow or we can make it wide right so right here we can go all the way from 40 all the way up to 400 but still, the times three is gonna expand all of this from 120 all the way up to 1.2K. So if you think about this, the EQ is, uh, you know, is pretty, pretty nice. You have a lot of control in what you can do. And we still need to cover this section, which is, you know, a little bit related with the EQ that we have right here. But still, if I play something, we just can carve some nice little curves. Let's say I'm going to go to the 18 range on the high frequencies and I'm going to be boosting or maybe you're going to be cutting. But then I can go right here and just, you know, extend the range and go up a tiny little amount and we just can make it a little bit narrower and then we just can maybe go up just to boost a little bit of the highs and again we could get a nice little curve right there all right same thing with the lows so let's go a little bit up on the on that one i'm gonna be standing on maybe right there I'm gonna go to the load mid frequencies, and what I want to do, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna boost a little bit more. All right, uh, maybe that's 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 fine. There we go. So I'm gonna go to the low mid frequency, and maybe I'm just gonna enable the multiplier. And notice how important this is. I'm just gonna be chopping a little bit, but I want to stand maybe on the 300 range, and I just want to make it a little bit like that. All right. If you want to cut a little bit, we can, a little bit from the highs. And again, we just can carve some really nice curves. If I bypass. All right. Okay, so starting from resets, we need to talk about the dynamics section. You know, this is the, f the dynamic filter section. And uh, is a, an additional thing that we get, so we can filter, you know, we can low pass and high pass and add a, a peak EQ, a bell, uh, so we can attenuate, well, you know, we can peak. Now this one by default usually goes to the dynamic section. So we filter and we do some processing before compressing or expanding or gating. Now, the thing is that this works on mysterious ways. So right here you have some lights and it's a little, you know, a little bit confusing. And for each uh, section, you know, the high pass, low pass and uh, peak EQ, we get, uh, you know, a button. So how this works is that if we are standing on the yellow line, this uh, low pass 
is only going to the compressor section. Now, if I click it again, now this is going to go green. So this means that this, you know, low pass is only going to the gate expander section. Right. And again, all of this is just pretty simple to understand. This is something very uh, standard that we get on, you know, a lot of consoles. Now, if I click it again, now it's going to both. And when you move something, it's giving you this what this yellow border, just telling you, dude, you're just, you know, using it here on this section. Now, the interest thing, the very interesting thing is that if I click it again, it, this can be used as an additional EQ section. So if you take a look at the, uh, you know, the spectrum, as soon as I chop it, notice that it, uh, it's just doing it. They're just, you know, really great. And it is that the light of the button is on. So if the light of the button is on, it means that we are using it, you know, to as a peak, uh, EQ or just, you know, as an additional low pass or high pass filter. So I'm going to be doing some drumming. Now let's see how this sounds. Now, if I uh, go right there, I'm going to be turning everything off because still, if we use these controls, everything that we have on the EQ, this is going to be reactive to whatever we have right here. So if I start low passing, we well, can chop it. All right, really simple. Now, if I go to the high pass filter, we get a tiny little boost right there, and then we just chop. Now, remember that what you see on the screen, all of this is just a representation. So you get an idea of what we are doing. If you're, maybe you're starting and you're learning, there's a just, you know, more visual way. Then at the end of the day, you need to use your ears. Now, then we have the peak, the peak gain. And this is the bell that we get right there. And it's a pretty simple. We can boost or we can attenuate by a lot. Right. Now, you don't get a way to select how wide or narrow uh, the band is. But what you get is, uh, you know, the frequency. You can select the frequency. By default, it's going to be on uh, X10, which is going to be all the way from 600 hertz and then going to all the way up uh, to 6K. Right. Now, if you want to go lower, no, it, this is a, it's just not letting you, but this is because we have the times 10. If you disable this, it's going to start from 60 hertz. And we can boost and attenuate as much as you wish. If we go up, it's going to go all the way to 800 hertz. Now remember that all of this, it's something that we can use with whatever bands that we have on the EQ section. So if I want to peak right here, or maybe I want to, maybe I want to peak, I can just stand it right there, you know, on the maybe the 200s. And then use maybe this EQ to do something like that, but in this case, I'm going to be going to be chopping, I'm going to be moving, and I can create a tiny little, you know, nice curve. Fine. All this just very reactive. If I chop this and I use the same thing, low pass frequency, low pass filter, sorry, it's going to be reactive to that. But you need to be careful here. Right. So this is a nice little thing, nice little extra thing that we get with the dynamic fi dynamics uh, filter section. We can choose if we wanted to use it as an extension of the EQ section, or maybe just go to the compressor, or maybe just go to the gate, or both at the same time. And we can choose independent sections, right? They're only going, only using the low pass, only using the, uh, you know, maybe using the low pass and the high pass, or use all at once. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the compressor section. Now, the compressor is a great all-around compressor. It can be a smooth, it can be snappy. So it's a verse, very versatile compressor. And again, comparing this with an SSL, you have a lot more control right here. Now, they're way different, but I'm just, you know, trying to compare this with one, you know, the SSL, uh, with one uh, channel that maybe most of us, you know, know at least, because it's just very famous. And the SSL, the compressor is just great, but it's just quite simple you don't get extended controls like you do here. So you have a wide range of attack and you have a wide range of release. So just by doing that, you know, you get a lot more control than an SSL. So they are just way different. Now, on top of that, you get the mix control, so you can do a little bit of parallel processing and you get a de and you get an exciter right here at the bottom. 
And if you want to listen what you want to DS or you want to excite, you can go to the listen right here. And it's just going to be uh, letting you hear what you want to process with this, you know, with this section. You can turn off the DS or maybe turn off the compressor section from this button. So again, if you have experience uh, with this, all of these controls are very simple. You can go all the way on the release and you're extending on the auto, you know, release. And, uh, and that's it, you know, that's that's the compressor. It's a VCA compressor, so it leans towards, uh, it leans towards the, to the clean and smooth side of things. Still, again, maybe if you're learning, we're gonna process a couple things and see uh, and see and hear how this works. So this is the sound I get, and I'm doing this so we can see the left side how we are, how much we are compressing, and you know what we are doing. And the right side on this, you know, the bottom, uh, you get the unprocessed signal. And I'm doing this because maybe again you're starting, and it's a nice way to learn by you know watching what you're doing. Then you need to use your ears and tell the difference, right? So you always need to use your ears. But at the beginning, you can start, you know, watching and then use your ears. So I'm going to be standing on reset and I'm going to remove the gate, the de-esser, and, it, you know, it's all the way off. So, but still, I'm going to be removing it and just use the compressor. So we have a kick and this kick has a lot of oomph. So we can start compressing and see what happens. I'm going to go to three to one because I like that setting. Now, as soon as I maybe going to go all the way down on the release, super fast release, super fast attack. And let's start compressing and see what happens. Let's do a little bit more. And as you can see, we are just starting to shape. Now we need to adjust a little bit of the gain. So I'm going to be going up in gain. Maybe around there. Now, on this plugging, when you do things like that, you can see right here your VU, how much out you're doing. Now, uh, if you click right here, it's going to say out. So this is what the, the signal that goes out. If you click it, you can see what goes in, right? So you can just compare and just, you know, game match. Now, so the compressor right here, you get, it's going to say how much you're compressing and I'm going really hard. So we can, you know, really see what we are doing right there. Okay. So fast attack, fast release, we get a little bit less of that, you know, super wide oomph. Just going to go up on the attack and let the uh, initial transient pass so we can get a little bit more of punch. Let's do a little bit more release. If I turn it off, really different. Right, so we are getting a lot of that oomph. Now it's just, you know, snappy, still snappy, but we get a little bit less of the oomph. Now let's do the opposite. Let's go all the way up on the attack and let the transient pass. Now it's a little bit, you know, hard right now. So I'm going to go down on the release. And I need to reduce the gain just a little bit because we are just letting everything pass. So there we go, almost there. Now, right now, notice how much we are shaping. It's a lot more present, but I still need to, maybe I want to smooth a little bit of the tail. So I'm gonna go up on the release. All right, let's do a little bit more. All right, so notice how much we are changing the original waveform to, you know, in comparison with the processed one. We get a lot of punch. Maybe I go right there. And I'm going to turn it off. On. Way different. Right. So the compressor is a nice all-around compressor. Notice that it never goes really, you know, really aggressive. And if we use it on just much more complex material, like a whole drums or something like that, it will always keep its cool. It's going to be always smooth. It will never, you know, go really hard. It's just, you know, it's a good all-around compressor. It's a VCA compressor. Okay, so I have some tambourines right here. And on purpose, they are just very, uh, you know, very dynamic. So we have a white, you know, just a peak right there, the transient, and we can really hear it. It's just a little bit annoying. So what we're going to be doing is just compressing and squashing 
and see if we can, you know, get uh, everything just sound a little bit more smoother and closer. All right, so I'm going to be compressing. I'm going to leave the settings. Remember, we always start from the reset uh, patch. So I'm going to start compressing. I'm going to be going aggressive. Because this is what I want to do. I want to squash. Now, this may be too much, but maybe I need to adjust this. I'm going to go to 3 to 1. And we need to level up a little bit. Now, we still, you know, get it, but now it's a little bit more, it's a little bit closer. Now I'm going to be going to a fast attack. A little bit better if you want to squash. If I turn it on, then maybe we need a little bit more level. Now we can compare the out with the in. Now right here at the bottom, you can see how much you're compressing. Now let's go a little bit more and see what happens. I go up in level. And there's how, how different now it is. We have all the in-betweens, the peaks are reduced, but we are really squashing. If I bring the original signal now, it's a lot smoother. Now we can go up on the release. That's gonna give us that, you know, kind of a pumping effect that maybe I don't want. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the fast side of things. So everything now is just super close. All right. So I am really squashing it. Right. I'm going really hard. Notice how much compression we are doing. Uh, maybe a little bit less. It's just, you know, sounds, it's going to sound a little bit better. So still, I'm doing a lot. And then the compressor, you know, reacts and it's very smooth. Right. We are just really changing the dynamics of the original sound source. And it's, you know, even though we are doing a lot of compression, it's, uh, you know, it's not really harsh at it. It's always very transparent. All right, so let's do something a little bit more fun. Let's compress some drums. Uh, I'm going to be using the compressor and uh, I want to do a little bit of compression. And right here we are doing a tiny little bit. I'm going to maybe go to 31 to let the transients pass. I'm going to go to a fast release and then we can check other settings. Let's do more compression. Uh, I'm going to go stand 3 to 1. Maybe I'm going to let a little bit more of that pass. Let's turn it off. Alright. Go the other way. I'm gonna go a fast attack and a little bit of a release. You get that pumping, which is I don't like. I'm still gonna leave it on the attack and compress more. Let's crush it. Right. Now remember that you have your mix control right here. So if you're crushing it, just like I am right now, you can go down on the mix control and get a blend. A little more dynamic, more dense. So still, you know, if you want to do a little bit, maybe just a tiny little bit, it will always good be going to be smooth. And notice how it's reacting right here, especially to the snare, because snare is just very loud. I'm going to do a little bit of release, and all the way down in the mix, up on the mix. I'm going to do a little bit less compression, it's just reacting to the snare around. 
mostly. You know, the low side of information. A little bit louder. Go down. So again, it's an all-around uh, com good compressor, you know, overall compressor, right? So I have some vocals right Girl, here, not babe, the best vocals ever, but that's fine. The mess you made. I don't hear about now let's just compress sticks. for fun. I just live my I'm gonna be doing a little bit of that, maybe so targeting. Nice I'm gonna be standing again at three. Nah, I'm gonna stand at five. Say. I just wanna live my life without you. Maybe a little bit faster in the release. The road, babe. And a little bit less the on the attack. You made. I don't I'm just gonna do a little bit of low. Mistakes. I just wanna live my life without you. So have a nice day. Close that door and be on Maybe your a little way. More. Not much else that I wanna right. say. I just now, the point live right here is that you get you. an exciter road, and a de-esser. So by doing listen, you can just target the frequency that you want to DS. Now, if you go to this side, you're gonna be DSing. You go all the way down. You know, it's just gonna be really aggressive. That right here, you just get it. It's just gonna show you where, when it's doing it. Now, if I take it out. Now, on the other side, it's going to be a, an exciter. So if I go to the other side, we can just choose whatever we want to excite. You know, all the way up if you wanted to. So have a nice day, close that door and be on your way. Not much else that I want to say. I just want to live my life without you. So hit the road, babe. I don't want to see the mess you right. made. I don't want to hear... Now, uh, the de and the Exciter, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice addition. Uh, and it's, I'm just going to give you my opinion. This is a deep dive, but this is my opinion. Uh, the de and the Exciter are fine, are cool, right? It's nice that we get it. Now, I much prefer to use this outside of the of this plugin and just maybe use something more dedicated to DS and Excite. And it's because I like a lot when I, when I do use an exciter and, uh, you know, it always depends on the on the style of music that you're using. Um, but if you if I want to use an exciter, I want something a little bit more powerful and with a little bit more control. Same thing when I do DSing, I want something, you know, a little bit more powerful. So this is nice that you get it, you know, but this is not the most important part of the plugging. The, uh, you know, the real cool thing of this is just going to be the EQs and, and, the, and the nice, you know, smooth compressor. Now let's do a little bit of filter to comp because it's something that we you know we used it with the EQ but we never used it with the compressor section. So as you may know, may not know, you can filter whatever sound that you're trying to compress before you compress it, and this will massively affect whatever you're trying to compress because you're just you know you know cutting and boosting. So uh, I'm gonna be bringing again that you know the, those drums. I'm going to be compressing and I'm going to be going a little bit aggressive. I'm just going to do something like that, something like that. And I'm going to go up and gain. So I'm just, you know, killing it. It's going really aggressive. Notice how much I'm doing. Now, the compressor really reacts to the low frequencies. Especially, you know, when, you, when you're when using drums, you're trying to compress drums. So the kink and the snare are just going to be triggering uh, the, uh, the compressor constantly. That's fine. And what we can do, we can just go to the filters and try to filter a little bit of that low energy to make the compressor work a little bit more, you know, work a little less, you know, a little bit smoother. So right here, we have your uh, your high pass. We're gonna chop the low frequencies. If I go all the way down, all the way up, that's how different now it is. It's reacting a lot to the snare, but not so much to the kick. So it's just a little bit better, which is different. Depends on what you want to do. Now, if we want it, we can filter the highs. And now we are just pretty much chomping everything. 
Now remember that the lights need to be on yellow if you want to go to the compressor. If you're doing something like this, you're not doing anything. And by doing both, you're going to gate and the compressor at the same time. I'm gonna be standing on just the compressor for now. All right, so right now it's just reacting a lot more to the snare. Now remember you get your peak EQ. So right here you can just boost and just find maybe the snare. I'm just gonna be disabling this and I'm gonna be going here. So I'm going to the compressor, not the EQ anymore. If I do this, that is that we are going to the EQ. So we can stay right there and maybe find the frequency of the snare. And maybe right there. And it's gonna be around here. All right, so now I can go back to the compressor and just reduce the gain, you know, reduce the peak and make it less reactive to, to like less reactive to everything. Still reacting to the snare, of course. But if I do the opposite, that is how it, how it goes. So this is what you would do, you know, with the filter to comp. You just target the frequencies that you want to chomp before going to the compressor. And, uh, and that's it, you know? It always depends on your sound source. Always depends on your sound source. Now, there's one more thing I didn't tell you, which is the link that you have right here at the top. Now, by default, and uh, maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going to a reset. I'm gonna be playing it again. And right now we have, uh, by default, I guess it's on link. Now, when you're in link, both channels, left and right, everything is just doing the same. That's why you get a single line of compression right here. Why do you just get a single line of compression? I'm gonna do something like that. So, left and right are being compressed equally. Now, if I unlink it, since this is a stereo source, it's going to be you know, compressing the left and the right, and it's gonna be on two different channels. That's why you get a left and right, and they are due two different channels. We're gonna talk about the TMT in a minute. So you have a benefit, and uh, so you, you actually have benefit, benefits for using the link on or the link off. Now the link on, since you're compressing equally left and right, your mono is gonna be a little bit more consistent. Maybe I'm gonna go up, okay. Now, when you unlink it, since you're offsetting, since the left is doing something and the right is doing something, you're processing the, it's different, different channels, it's gonna be a little bit more open. Right? And you can really hear that. You need to good, use good headphones. No, a lot more open. All right. So this is what the link will do, and it depends on what you're processing and what you want to do. Right now, I'm just showing you examples and I'm going really aggressive so we can tell the difference. Okay, so back to our reset, and now we need to talk about the gate in. Now, this is a gate and expander, and it's, uh, you know, really cool because, again, just like the compressor, you get extended controls. So you get your threshold, and uh, I'm gonna give you a kind of an overall right now, because maybe you have experience already and you don't need to watch the next section. So you have your range, so you can go really aggressive and just, you know, just uh, select how much you want to do of the gate or the expanding. And uh, you have a hold control, which is, you know, really useful. And then you have the, your release, and you can even choose the, a fast attack for the gate or the expander. Now, if you're using a side chain, uh, by ex uh, enabling this, you're gonna be using it, the, using the side chain. And if you want to listen, what Whatever it is that you're trying to sidechain, right here, the enabling the key listen is gonna let you hear, uh, you know, the sidechain. It's a, you know, pretty simple gate and a pretty simple uh, expander. Now, since this is a deep dive, I'm gonna assume that you, maybe you know, you don't know what the gate or an expander is. And I'm just gonna show you how this works and I'm gonna give you a few examples. All right, so first I'm gonna explain what the expander is. Now, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna show you the, my example. I'm gonna make it just larger. So as we can see, 
we have the, uh, this is going to be the process and this is going to be the unprocessed signal. And uh, what we want to do with the gate or the expander, we want to alter the dynamic range. So this is a way of compression. So when uh, we are doing compression, and I'm going to do it right now, you know, I'm going to be going really hard on this. Get really hard. I'm going to stay on five for now. I'm going to release all the way down, attack all the way down. And I'm going to go up in game. Now, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more in game. It's okay. So I'm going to turn it off. And I want you to hear, listen to how the hat sounds. You have an accent, some accents, and then all the in-betweens. If I compress it, now we can still hear the accents, but all the in-betweens are really cl much closer to the accents. Even if, if I compress more, it's going to be more obvious. So we have, you know, we are just reducing the dynamic range. We go down in volume uh, when the accents hit, and then by going up in gain, we just bring all the in-betweens. That's why we are just compressing. We bring everything closer. So we compress to make it less dynamic, right? Compress to make it less dynamic. That's the plan. Now an expander, and I'm gonna stop now, an expander is the opposite of that. So when we are standing on the gate in, when we click on the expand, now this works as an expander. So with expander, we expand the dynamic range. We do the opposite from the compressor, right? So when we compress, we make it less dynamic. And when we expand, we expand the dynamic range. Okay, so let me, I can give you an example. I'm gonna be uh, playing the track again. And let's assume, let's just pretend that the file, you know, the, uh, you know, the web or whatever file you get, is gonna be this one, right? The one that we have at the top. Not, not this one, not the original one. Let's assume that this is the file that we get. So we get a super highly compressed hi-hats. And what we want to do is we want to make it less dynamic because right now, I'm sorry, we want to do it more dynamic because right now it's just not super dynamic, right? We can see it right here. So we can still hear the accents, but it's not so dynamic, which is fine. But I want to make it more dynamic. So with the expander, since it works like a compressor, we just can target the different parts and make it more dynamic. That's the plan. Okay, so first of all, we need to, to do the gate in and we need to go to the expand. Now the expander again works like a compressor. We need to adjust the, thre the, the threshold to find the sweet spot when it's going to be working and when it's going to be triggering. So as I go, go up and then for now, I'm just going to leave all the settings like the way they are. As again, I'm going to go up. At least it sounds different. It's going to start picking it up, picking it up, and we can see it right here when it's picking it up. And I can keep going up. That is what happens. Keep going up. So now, without, with. It's a little bit silent, but as we can see on the waveform, we get the accents back and the in-betweens are just, you know, a little bit down. So now it's more dynamic, less dynamic, more dynamic. And this is the main point of an expander. Now, if I go up in range, this is going to be like how much, uh, you know, how aggressive this is going to be. So if I keep going up in range, it's going to keep getting aggressive on that until we get something a little bit more, you know, aggressive. Without, with. I can really hear the accents now. Super compressed. If I go all the way down, this is how much of the expander we are doing. If we do less, at some point we are just not doing anything. So the range is likely how much of this do you want? And again, just like the threshold, you need to find the sweet spot. And always depends on the source that you're trying to expand. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit more threshold and be more aggressive. Now the release plays a part. If I go down and I go all the way up, we just can hear the difference, right? So this works again like a compressor. Right now, it's just closing really fast. 
And we can see it right here. As I go up, it's going to work a little bit smoother. So we can hear a little bit more of the tails. Right. Same thing with the fast attack. If I want one or two, start very quickly. And again, works just like a compressor. We can make it react very really fast. And maybe add a little bit of release to make it work a little bit smoother. Maybe I'm doing too much, right? Let me just go less. Right. Off. On. Also notice that the gain just changes a little bit, so you need to adjust your gain when you use this. Now really dynamic. Super compressed. Right? So this is what you would use an expander. Now, then we have the other side, which is going to be the gate. Now, the gate is something that you might use to remove, um, you know, parts or remove noise. You can use it for, you know, a lot of different things. So, in this case, what we can do, maybe, I just can target different parts, and I want to remove parts of the, of the source, which is going to be this one. So, I'm going to stand the gate, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to be removing the expand, because now we want to gate. And this works the same way. Now we need to, and I'm going to go to defaults right now, right there, defaults, and I'm going to remove the fast attack. So if I go to nothing, we get the same source, and as I keep going up, it's going to pick up, you know, the more transient part of the file. And it's going to start opening and closing the gate. So notice it's just letting the accents pass, and it's going to close a little bit later. Right. So this is what it does. It opens and then it closes at some point. Right. So what if I want to expand the range? But now it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. There's a we get the accents and a little bit of the, you know, the second part. If I keep going up at some point, we just get the accents. Right. So this is what you would use a gate. You know, maybe you want to process something like this. Or maybe just get rid of the noise, you know, it's a very common usage for a gate. Now, the release will play a part if I go down on the gate. That is, it just opens and closes really hard. As I keep going up the release, it's going to be a little bit smoother, but also will bring you a little bit of the, you know, the other parts that maybe you just don't want to get. If I go up, notice how we are shaping it. Again, all this is just a taste. You need to find the sweet spot depending depending on just what you want to do. In this case, I'm going to go maybe a little bit like that. Now, then you have a hold. For now, I'm just going to turn it off. So, by uh, you know, when it triggers, it's opening and then it's closing at some point. Now, the hold is going to say, you know, gate, hold it for a little, a little bit longer. And this is so we can just maybe try to fine-tune it to make it not close as soon as it detects the peak. Now, if I go all the way down and hold, notice that the hat closes really fast. So by adding a little bit of hold, you can just try to bring a little bit of that tail. And the hold is like a, you know, it's a setting that you will use at the end. Whenever you do whatever you want to do, if you want to, uh, you know, get a little bit of more of that tail, you can make it hold. And just see if you, if you can get it right. So it depends on the sound source. If I turn it off, now I go back. It's completely different, right? right? So back to reset. Now, this is why you why you would use a, a gate on X or an expander. It's not that you have to use it. It depends on what you want to do. Maybe you, have, so you want to reduce uh, the dynamic range. Well, then you use a compressor. You want to expand it. Well, then you use an expander. If you want to uh, maybe remove some parts or remove some noise and just maybe control it a little bit more, you know, whatever file you have or sound you have, then you use a gate, right? A very common usage for gates uh, is like when you, let's say that you're recording, right? Um, you're recording a guitar. And you have a, a bunch, you know, a, a large file. Now, there are going to be some silences when the, the guitar plays. And maybe you have that noise, you know, from the amp. Well, maybe it's a nice idea to gate those noises. Now, you can still go to the file and remove them manually. But, you know, the, the gate is just going to do it uh, for you much faster. 
Now, the uh, when you gate it, sometimes is a is an art because it depends on the file. It might be a very noisy file, so sometimes you can be getting it. You know, when you uh, fine tune it, you can get those parts, and sometimes you're just not gonna get it, and you will need to go manually to the file. It's not a magical, you know, magical thing. Okay, so let's talk about the TMT. Now, this is an emulation of a real mixing console, and, and every channel is going to be a little bit different. So this plugin uh, is emulating the left and the right going to different channels of the same console. And you can see the channels right here. The left is going to be the channel number, you know, the console number one, and the right and the right is going to be the console number two. And this is why, uh, if you see it right here on the spectrum, when I move some of the knobs, you know, do a little bit of the Q, well, let me just get right there, is offsetting. And notice that you get a purple and a light blue line. Well, this is the stereo. It's going to be the left and the right. So when we move the knobs and we, we compress and we do things, it's going to off the, offset the left from the right a little bit. And it's just a tiny little bit. And this is because we are using a version of the console and a different version on the right side, right? We use one version on the left and a different on the right. And all this just gives you this uh, analog vibe because they, uh, they are different emulations. They are just offset by a tiny little bit. Now, one cool thing that they give you is that you can choose different channels. So, for example, if I keep moving on, notice how they offset. So, different channels will give you a different behavior. As they keep going up, up and up, you will just be getting different results. Now, all of this is just nice because it gives you this analog vibe. Now, uh, if you don't want it, you can disable it from here. Right now, the stereo mode is going to be analog, but maybe you just don't want it. So by just clicking, it's going to go to digital. So everything is right now is just going to be pretty much the same. Now, again, you can still toggle through the different channels and they will give you different curves and different results because they are just emulations of versions of different channels. Now, another thing that you get, and I'm going to do the same thing than before, maybe you're going to go up and just offset it. We are still standing, we are standing on the analog mode. And when we change it, you know, we get different vibes of this. And this is something really cool. Now, when you get right here at the bottom, it's the random channel and you get one or all. So when you click on one, it's going to get, get you a uh, variation, you know, a different version on this channel, this instance of this plugin. And you just can click it and it's going to give you a random one, right? That's the point. Now, when you click all, this is going to look uh, on your session and it's going to find all the instances of your of this plugin, you know, the same, uh, you know, the, the console. And it's going to apply a random console to uh, to all of the different channels. And again, it's like using on real life different real channels. All the channels now will now have different variations and this will cooperate to give you this you know, analog vibe that maybe you're seeking if you're using uh, this uh, an emulation of a console. So that's going to be the TMT, right? This is what you can do with the TMT. Now, the other thing is going to be the harmonic distortion. Now, since this is an emulation, it will give you saturation. So this is a representation of the saturation that we get. And it's just fine. You know, we get a little, tiny little bit, which is, you know, fine. Now, if I go to this knob right here, it's going to say THD. So this is total harmonic distortion. As, I, as soon as I go up, right now we are getting something. But if I keep going up, we're going to start getting more, more, more and more. And notice that everything depends on, you know, on the channel as well. So if I maybe do uh, start changing it, notice that it will give you a little bit of different to a harmonic distortion, just going to be, a, you know, just a tiny little bit. But still, if you want more, this is going to give it to you. Right now, this is a sine wave with a single tone. And maybe you're saying, oh, but this is not a lot. Well, on a real, you know, on a real track with a lot of harmonics, you know, with a real track, you're going to get uh, a lot more harmonic distortion. So going all the way up, maybe it's not a right, the, the right thing. But again, it's, complete, it's completely up to you. Right, so then you get the input and the V gain. So uh, the input gain is just the in gain, right? So if you're driving the plugging too hard, you just can attenuate and maybe drive uh, the compressor less harder. You're just going down in the in gain. Now, always remember that right here, you get the in and the out. Now, we get these values. I'm getting these values because I'm using uh, this plugging that sends, uh, you know, a signal and it's a constant, almost constant signal. But you can go down in gain or maybe you can crank it up and just hit it harder. 
Now, then you have the V gain. What the F is the difference? Now, the V gain, what you will be getting is uh, an emulation of the noise. So uh, if this is an analog channel, it will give you a low level noise. Uh, noise and I'm talking about you know low level noise now if you use a uh, if I go down on, on the gain V gain notice that there is not a lot of difference and even on default values you just don't get a lot of difference but uh, if I keep going up notice that these lines are going to start looking fuzzy and this is because we are using we are adding a lot of noise now the noise is an emulation that you get you know is the low level noise from the uh, real console it's an emulation so going up on the V gain is going to give you that noise. Now, you need to be careful because right now by default, uh, it's going to be there. But, you know, for one reason, this is what you would get normally. You can just turn it off. But still, if you want more, you can get more. Now, if you use a lot of instances of this, maybe going up in the noise is going maybe not what you want. Because then later when you compress and you process everything, this noise is going to, you know, it's going to bring it up. So... Again, it's just, you need to be a little bit careful. But if you want that noise, you want more a no, more noisy type of, um, you know, console, you just get it from here. And this is a good thing because some other emulations of channels, some other emulations of channels, uh, they have, uh, you, you don't have a saying. You just cannot go up on the harmonic distortion or go down. You cannot go up on the gain uh, or the V gain or you cannot go down. So the fact that we get it right here is, is you know, it's nice because we, we get uh, an emulation, but we can get rid of the whole emulation by just doing this and using it as a normal channel. Now, since now we know what the THD and the V gain, you know, what, what they are, right here at the top, you get global control. So this THD and this V gain is for this instance of the console. But the right at the top, you know, it's like the random channel. We can click on all, it's gonna give us a random channel for all the instances on your session. And right here, you can just, uh, you know, control or just, you know, offset uh, uh, the V gain and the THD of all you know, your instances, right? So again, it's just a way of just controlling this on a more global scale in your project. Now, uh, still what you get uh, right here is gonna be the face. You can invert the face, super simple. You just can mute the channel. The, you know, the track is still playing in the back, but you mute whatever it is that you're going doing. And again, you get your fader. I believe, believe I just don't need to explain this. Now. Right here, you have a solo M and a solo V and a solo S. Maybe you're wondering, oh, we can do mid-side processing. No, you cannot. What this will do, it will just let you hear the mid-side. The processing is still in stereo. You just cannot alter it. This is all, the, what this is, is only a way of uh, just auditioning the mid-side. And if you want to audition the side, you just go there and just, you get it. Mid and side. Right? Where can you use it? And whatever you want, right? It's a very open, nice, smooth console. You can use it whatever you want. And I'm telling you this because uh, when it terms when it comes to consoles, I will always get the same question: Can I use this console to do rock, or can I use this console to do EDM, or what is the best console to do EDM? Well, this is completely irrelevant. You can use whatever console to do whatever. And what's even better, you can use different consoles on your same session. Let's say that you want, you have some drums and you want some more aggressiveness. Well, maybe the SSL is just going to give you this, you know, punchy aggressiveness. So just use SSL on the, on the, on the drums. Now, maybe you have some guitars and some synths and you want something a little bit more open. Well, then maybe the focus right is going to give you that. You can use the SSL on the drums and the focus right on the, on the, on, you know, on the in instruments. And you just get a combination. You don't need to, when you work in a session, just use this console, right? And the, the combination is just going to give you different flavors. And you can do that, you know, maybe back in the day they couldn't, but now you can. So there's no right console for different styles. And, um, and again, it's a, completely up to you. You want a little bit more open? Well, maybe the focus rate is going to give you that. Maybe you want a little bit more punch and aggressive net, well, aggressiveness. Maybe the SSL is going to give you a little bit of more of that. But still, you can just, you know, get great results with both. 
uh, if you want to work with some uh, maybe modern type of music and you still want the SSL, well, maybe the J is going to give you that. You can still create great mixes with any console. Uh, and again, I'm telling you this because this is like the number one question I get when it, uh, it comes to consoles. Uh, where can I use this Focusrite? Or, you know, you can use whatever you want. All right, so that being said, uh, that's it, you know, this is the console, this is what you can do with this, this is how, how it sounds, it's a very smooth, open, clean, you know, type of console, and I really, really like it, I use it a lot, so, uh, okay, so if, if you learned something and you find all this helpful, please like and subscribe, and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to the links of the description, and you have links for PayPal, you have a uh, YouTube thanks, and you have Patreon. Maybe you can be a one-month patron and buy me a coffee that way. All right, so see you on the next one. And I guess I'm going to be, you know, in the Brainworks Plugin Alliance, you know, universe. I think I'm going to be uh, maybe doing the Amec one. Why not?